So there's been a lot of questions regarding how modifying an ICM3 unit impacts the overall usage of the basic functionality of the ICM3. So I'm going to look to alleviate any concerns um, that you might have with the modification so you can sort of see it in everyday use, starting from the moment that the ignition is turned on. So. This stunning machine is a 9.3 from 2006, which only has 46,000 miles on the clock and is in pretty much immaculate condition. It belongs to my friend Jed, who lent it to me for the sole purpose of uh, making a video to demonstrate what the ICM3 modified units look like inside the cars. So thank you very much, Jed, for this opportunity. It's crazy to think this car is 15 years old because it doesn't look like it. It looks amazing. Here's a few other examples of the Android ICM3 being installed in uh, various people's cars. So let's turn on the ignition and see what happens. So the ignition is now on and the radio has come on. So this is playing Radio 1 and you can see that it's playing Radio 1 because it actually says it on the SID here. So the radio is still fully functions. You can still tune the radio in, you can still have preset stations, all of that stuff still works. CD player, still going to work. The basic functionality which you have buttons for here work but instead you see there's a Saab logo on here and it's showing a loading sign. So that's the difference. Now, if you want to have audio from the new modification that you have on here, you need to press the disc button. The first time you press it, it's gonna go into CD mode as usual. If you press it once more, it will go to auxiliary and the auxiliary is the mode that this unit needs to uh, basically give you audio. So if I press play now on the screen, it's playing music from my, uh, from my Spotify. Um, and again, if you get bored of um, you know, listening to your music on your phone and you wanna go back to the radio again, hit radio over here. Singers. He has and the range, he has again, the setup. It just goes back to normal again. This. And you can kind of um, so get a context of that's the what it's like to have an album. upgraded system oh, yeah. in your car. So, what you want to do um, to adjust the audio settings on here is um, exit out of Android Auto or if you have uh, Apple CarPlay, use these options before you go into Apple CarPlay. And um, when you're on the dashboard, which is what you can see here, um, there's a button that says Equalizer. Now, when you first install this device, it's going to be set to flat, which has minus 10 across the board. This is a standard graphic equalizer, okay? So towards the left-hand side, are all the lower frequencies and the base frequencies then it moves into the center area which which is sort of the mids and then the right hand side which is the the highs the treble um, so you can actually modify this and have it however you want and i will say that you should be very careful when you do this it makes a massive difference to the sound quality um, the flat well sounds flat whereas um, if you uh, if you adjust it it, it, it can sound really, really good. So flat is minus 10 across the board. My custom is zeros, and then I've reduced these ones to one, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, and then the rest are zero. So I've got bass and treble um, sort of higher than the, than the mids. Now, it might seem weird uh, to do it this way, but the smallest adjustments make a significant difference to the way 
that it sounds inside the car, okay? Um, this particular car has upgraded door speakers and dashboard speakers and the adjustments that I've made on this stereo personally I think sound the best in the in this scenario with this car. There's no distortion when you turn the volume up and the bass is really punchy and you've got those nice highs from the treble as well. So go ahead and, and, and play around with this bearing in mind of course that these aren't high. I mean I haven't actually got any of these options above well, zero. Zero is the highest that I have. They do go up all the way to 60. Um, this pushes a lot of power through your car amplifier. So it's going to cause distortion if you just be very, very careful with um, uh, modifying this. It, it is worth doing it. Just be careful when you're doing it. So let's talk about some negative points. Uh, first of all, you can't change the tracks of Spotify or your app of choice using your steering wheel. Um, it simply doesn't interact with the car functionality like that. You can still adjust the volume, but you can't change the tracks. The other thing that you will lose is night panel for the screen. When you hit night panel, your dashboard goes dark, but your screen will not react to that. It will continue to be on. That's uh, the second thing that will remain. And then, of course, there's the audio adjustment. So you haven't got the original ICM3 screen. So this audio button would normally allow you to go to the options where you can adjust the fade, the balance, and the bass and the treble. Now, you, obviously, you can't see those functions anymore. They are still there, so you technically can still adjust them after you've modified it blind. OK, Google. Take me to Warrington. Okay, handing off to Waze. Here are the search results for Warrington, Peterborough. Oh, it's, it's literally this simple. Or if you prefer to not use voice control, you can you can use the screen as well, of course. So I'll just end drive. Your search bar's up here, so um, you can just try type in where you want to go and oops Warrington there we go and then it will uh, do it that way as well so total control um, obviously from an apps perspective uh, hit the button down here and it will show you uh, anything that you have installed on your phone which is compatible with your um, with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay um, will be listed here and um, yeah, so it's, it's really um, as simple as that.